As we have been looking at 2 Corinthians, we've been looking at chapters 1 to 7, and for some of you, a little reminder to some of you, and maybe for the first time for others, that Paul had come to this church, that's the point he's making, he'd come and founded the church in the first place, he's not going into other people's territory, he was the one who brought the gospel to them, and as time passed by, he then went on his missionary journeys elsewhere, and whilst he was away, other teachers, the super apostles, came in with a different type of gospel, and they were turning people against Paul. They were saying, look how weak he is, look how many troubles he has, surely he can't be from God. And listen to our fantastic way we speak, listen to us and what we promise you, and all these kind of things, build up your knowledge. And this kind of tension was building in the church. And the first few chapters, 1 to 7, we see that Paul was coming along pastorally, but also quite firm words. But this time of reconciliation, this time of change, something has happened. The church has started to listen to Paul, and many within the church have started to mend the error of their ways. And then, in chapters 8 and 9, Paul goes off almost at a tangent, but the point he's making is that the way we see the gospel growing in you is if you're being generous to others. And he reminds them that they had promised to start raising money for churches that were less well off, specifically the one back in Jerusalem, but they kind of forgotten about that. So spending that time reminding them about the importance of receiving from God and giving out in many ways, including money. If you haven't heard Peter's sermon from last week on generosity, I would encourage you to do so. I believe it's the most helpful sermon I've heard on generosity, so please check it out or listen to that again. Now there's another turn starting in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 10. And <laughs> some have suggested that so Paul has gone to bed and woken up after having a very bad night's sleep, very grumpy. I don't know if you're ever like that, he went a bit grumpy in the morning. <laughs> or some have suggested that he's had more bad news, that yeah, he thought the church was turning back, but people are still following these so-called super apostles. Others have suggested that the letter has been put together in different ways. This is actually another letter, it was part of a missing letter, so that's why the tone changes. But whatever the case, I think what he's doing is acknowledging that many in the church have started to listen and mend their ways, but there's still this core that are resisting and listening to the super apostles. So he's focusing on them with some quite strong words, pastoral words, but strong words. Basically he's saying, you're calling me timid. You're calling me a coward. You think I'm not coming to you because I'm scared of you. You say that my letters are very bold. But he's not coming. If he does turn up, then he's going to be a bit of a wimp when he does so. They're also saying, who's he? Who's he? And he's reminded, actually, I am the person who founded this church. I am the real deal. I have been sent, I was sent, and I'm still here from God to help, and these are the words he uses, to build you up. To build the church up. And that building of the church comes through the indwelling of the gospel. One of my favourite words or concepts. Indwelling of the gospel. Not just listening, not just hearing the words, but the gospel becoming part of us. The gospel going deeper within us, transforming us. And then towards the end of chapter 10, he also says, but it doesn't stop there. As well as coming to build you up, I also want to see the health of the gospel spread to go wider than your church, to go wider and wider, and you are to be part of that. So the title for this morning is Deeper and Wider. Let's think about deeper. Paul loves this church. You see with the phrases he uses here and in other letters, you hear this, this paternal, this fatherly love for the church, and, and he sees them also at the same time as brothers and sisters, as family. He wants to build the church up because of his love for that church. And this is reflecting the love of God, the love that God has for his church. He wants it to be a healthy church. 
And let's face it, we all know, if you've ever been to church, you know that it's very easy for churches to become unhealthy or to have pockets of unhealthiness within the church. He wants it to be as church should be, healthy. And therefore he wants to address the problems. It's very tempting within churches to ignore problems. They might go away. They don't, unless they are addressed. So he addresses what he calls pretension. Falseness, pretending that's going on within the church. Arguments which are disrupting the church. Disruptive teaching. He uses this very big phrase, strongholds. Sound like this big spiritual strong. Actually, strongholds, very real strongholds that can be within churches that cause problems within churches. Whereas we are to be transformed. Did you know you are to be transformed? That's part of the reason you're here this morning, folks, and I am to be transformed. We are to be transformational communities. Feel free to leave now. We don't want to be transformed. Or do that. And as I say, one of the signs for Paul that the church was not indwelling the gospel was that they were getting less generous. They weren't actually finishing what they had started. They weren't thinking of people outside of the church. So he knew something was going wrong. How do we go deeper? And why do we want to go deeper? What does that mean? Why is depth important in the building up of a body? I mentioned it before. If you think, if you've seen the new flats being built near Splashpoint, for months and months and months they were doing the digging and the big diggers and everything, and the foundations went down before the building started. And those flats will probably go up quite high. And the reason they can is because of the deep foundations. <laughs> Churches need to have a deep, deep, <laughs> deep foundation. And in one sense, that depth needs to be growing all the time. In what way? How do we get deeper? Part of it, and part of the word that Paul uses, is in our obedience, not our disobedience. Our obedience to Christ. And I think the crux of that, in some respects, forget about all the do's and don'ts, you should be like doing that, all these different laws and everything. The crux of it is, go deeper with Christ by becoming more like the character of Christ. Paul starts off chapter 10 with these words, I come with the humility and the gentleness of Christ. We read about that humility in Philippians chapter 2, the most beautiful verse is probably an early hymn about Christ being God, but in Jesus not grasping on to all the privileges of being God, but humbling himself and coming as a human, coming as a servant, looking not just to the needs of the self, but looking to the needs of the others. And this is opposed to pride, the thing that the super apostles were puffing up in people and in themselves, turning the way of the world and the thinking of the world on its head. We go deeper, we build ourselves up by going deeper, but by becoming more other-centred, by serving people both within church and outside. It is, sorry to be so simplistic, but it's all about love. Love can get lost in churches. Love can get lost in Christianity. It's so bizarre. As people read the Bible, love can get lost. But it's all about the love of God, receiving and giving, being transformed by the love of God. Which way is the bench facing? This bench I mentioned on the Isle of Wight that was put back facing the wrong way. Which way are you looking? Are you looking upwards to God? Actually, we always use the phrase upwards, but think about it. Part of looking to God is looking within because God promises to dwell within us. The deposit Paul speaks about earlier, the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. So part of it is that inward focus to Christ within and being open to the Christ that dwells within you. Open to Christ transforming you from within. Are you aware Christ is within you? Sounds very grand, but it's very true. 
Are you open to Christ transforming you from within? Katie and I have been Katie and I, Peter? Katie and Katie. <laughs> Katie and I have been here ten years. And my heart's desire is to see this church built up. And everything I have tried to do has been to build this church up. And Peter has been here for three years, and his heart's desire is the very same. But it's still early days. We're nothing grand, we're nothing flash. When I was praying the other day, a vision came to mind, and this could just be my unconscious working things out, or it could be God speaking, or it could be the both, but I'll share it with you, and you decide. I saw Worthing Baptist Church, not like this, all beautiful and colourful and cut off in a vase, ready made. We ain't flash, folks. Have you noticed? We're not flash. In any way, we don't have that kind of beauty. But in this dream, vision, whatever you want to call it, about the Worthing Baptist Church, I suddenly saw this pot, a clay pot, and it had bulbs in it, under the soil. We're more like that. But what that picture has, they're going to die eventually. We ain't flash, we ain't glossy, we ain't shiny and new. But the potential of the bulbs in the messy soil, the potential, the promise for the future, I think that is you and me over the years, us over the years ahead. God is inviting us to go deeper with him. Did you know that? God is inviting you to go deeper, to allow him to go deeper within you as individuals and as a church. How? Well, it's partly through the Bible teaching and then mulling it over in whole life groups and then reading and praying about it or listening to it during the week. It's partly through the one-to-ones Peter and I offer with regulars and members, part of discipleship, part of getting alongside you. Within this church, every church, part of it is uncovering Jesus. I often use the phrase decluttering. But so much in churches gets in, and in our lives gets in the way of Jesus. But as well as love, Jesus, who is love, gets blocked out. Part of it is uncovering Jesus. And as that goes on, inviting him deeper and deeper. Paul uses the phrase, he says to the church, as your faith continues to grow, our faith, our trust in God is meant to grow week after week, day after day, year after year. But our faith isn't just up here. This is where we can go wrong. A set of doctrinal beliefs. I believe that, I believe that, I believe that, so I'm a Christian. And I'm not going to stray from any of that. No, faith is what we believe up here, but then it transforms us from here into being more loving. It's living out our faith by living out the trust we see in God. So yes, maybe being able to let go of our money more, or give over our time to do things that seem countercultural, to come to church when we could be playing golf, or going running, or eating, or whatever. It takes trust and faith. And coming forward to do a reading, that is living by faith. Actually doing, not just believing. 